First, the top headlines, Gan Ngai celebrated in the state. MHA envoy arrived in Infal, met Arambai Tengol. And curfew relaxed in Imphal East, West and Thaubal districts till 10 p.m. For Kakshin district, curfew has been relaxed till 8 p.m. In Bishnupur district, curfew has been relaxed till 5 p.m. today. Good afternoon and welcome to 12.30 p.m. LETV English News with me, Gentilio Kame. Now, straight up to top stories. The Gan Ngai of the Zaliang Rong community celebrated in Manipur. The Gan Ngai festival is one of the major festivals of Manipur, which is celebrated every year after harvesting. The festival also marks the end of the year when the farmers have stored their food grains in their granaries. During the festival, the Ziliang Ruang community shows their gratitude by offering the Almighty a good harvest and praying for a better and prosperous life in the coming year. It is a custom to produce new fire by rubbing dry wood and split bamboo pieces and distributing them to every household on the day of the festival to mark the beginning of the new year. The state-level Gan Ngai celebration organized by Kabui Union Manipur was hailed at Kaisham Tong Kabui Kailong in Fal West. Mairang MLA Thongam Shanti Singh Ka Mai Amu Kabui Kulagpu Kaisham Tong Kabui Kailong. Kamsong Gangmu Mai Kabui President Kabui Customary Council, Professor N. Joy Kumar Singh, HOD, Retired Department of History, MU, Dr. Dana Bir Laishram, Social Scientist, Sapamcha Jadumani, President, Federation of Haumis. Konthaujam Joy Chandra, President, United Committee, Manipur. M. Pramod Singh, Thau Burel, Maitai Lipun. Kurai Jam Athauba, Spokesperson, Kokomi, VP, IPSA. Vidya Pati, Senjem, Vice President. Lining Thau Sanamahi, Temple Board and Dr. K. Hira Kabui, President, Kabui Union, Manipur, attended as main guest. Speaking on the occasion, Chief Guest of the Function, MLTH Shanti, explained about the relation between Kabui and Mitei in detail. Amid the raging ethnic conflict in Manipur, three-member team of Ministry of Home Affairs led by Interlocutor of Suspension of Operation, A.K. Mishra, arrived yesterday. According to a report acting on the directive of Union Home Minister Mishra to look into the ethnic conflict which has ravaged the state since May 3rd last year, Su Interloc Interlocutor A.K. Mishra, along with IB Joint Director New Delhi, Mandeep Tuli, and Joint Director I.S.I.B. Imphal, Rajesh Kamble, landed at Imphal Airport on special flight around 5.30 p.m. Monday. The three-member team would closely monitor the conflict in Manipur and directly report to the ministry concerned. It may be mentioned on February 23rd last year, it was notified that the agreement signed between the central and state governments, Armed Outfits, United People's Front, UPF and Cookie National Organization, KNO, had been extended for 12 more months, that is, from March 2023 till February 29, 2024. After the ethnic conflicts broke out on May 3rd last year, Interlocutor A.K. Mishra held a meeting with Kangpokpi CSOs on 11 May with regard to the ongoing talks between UPF and KNO. The meeting was attended by officers of the Ministry of Home Affairs, representatives of Kuki NP Kangpokpi, Kuki Students' Organization Sadar Hills, Tadao NP Kangpokpi District, Tadao Students' Association Sadar Hills, Tadao Youth Association Sadar Hills, Gangte Students' Organization and other civil bodies. 
Meanwhile, in the aftermath of escalating tensions and security concerns, the state government has initiated reinforcements of security forces across vulnerable areas and foothills in Imphal West, Imphal East and Bishnupur districts. This strategic deployment has come into the backdrop of a series of attacks perpetrated by Kuki militants and targeting both civilians and security forces in the strife-torn state. On the other hand, a special envoy of Ministry of Home Affairs who arrived here on Monday had a meeting with leaders of Arambai Tengol at Sanna Konung Palace Compound on Monday evening. Though details about the transpired during the meeting remain unknown, Arambai Tengol leader Koran Korau Nganba Kuman revealed about the meeting in a Facebook post along with sharing the demands proposals they placed before the MHA team in order to resolve the crisis raging in the state. According to him, the Arambai Tengol team demanded the MHA team to conduct an NC NRC exercise with 1951 as the base year and to deport the illegal immigrants. They also demanded to abrogate the suspension of Operation Suo agreement with Kuki militants and take up action against them for their aggression, shift, to, shift the refugees from Myanmar staying in the state to Mizoram and expedite border fencing. A collaborative team comprising security forces and the forest department successfully carried out the eradication of approximately 30 acres of illicit poppy plantation at Mullam and Shongfell Hill ranges under the jurisdiction of Leitan Police Station on January 22. The operation marks a crucial step in combating the illegal cultivation of poppy, a notorious plant often associated with the production of opium and narcotics. Apart from the targeted poppy destruction, security forces engaged in comprehensive search operations and area domination across the fringe and vulnerable areas of hills and valley districts. In parallel, authorities have undertaken measures to facilitate, facilitate the smooth movement of essential items across the region. A total of 389 vehicles along NH 37 and 282 vehicles along National Highway 2 all transporting crucial commodities were ensured safe passage by the security forces. Strict security protocols have been implemented in vulnerable locations with security convoys deployed in sensitive stretches to guarantee the unimpeded and secure transit of vehicles. To fortify their presence and prevent any untoward incidents, a staggering 142 Nakas checkpoints were installed across different districts of Manipur, encompassing both the hill and valley regions. As a result of these stringent measures, 158 individuals were detained by the police in connection with various violations observed in different districts of the state. Also in the news, the Manipur government has initiated the process of construct fencing along the Indo-Myama border. Just a day after Union Home, Minist Home Minister Amit Shah announced that the centre is soon going to begin the process of fencing the Indo-Myama border, the government in Manipur today initiated the start of the process as the Deputy Commissioner of Churachanpur District sent a letter to the subdivisional officers of the Singat and Swangdo subdivisions seeking a list of villages. The list of villages has been sought with respect to the land accusation for erection of fencing and construction of a road along the indo Myama border in Churachanpur district. Noteworthy is that on January 20, Union Home Minister Amit Shah has said that the centre will soon fence the india Myama border just like it has it has barricaded the border along with Bangladesh in a bid to restrict free movement into the country. With this announcement, the free movement regime, which allows people residing close to the india myanmar border to venture 16 km into each other's territory without a visa will, soon, will end soon. While speaking at the passing out parade of Assam police commandos in Guwahati, Amit Shah said India's border with Myanmar will soon be protected like the border with Bangladesh. He also said that the government is also reconsidering India's free movement regime FMG agreement with Myanmar and will soon end the free movement into India. India shares a 1,006 
643-kilometer long border with Myanmar which passes through states like Mizoram, Manipur, Nagaland and Arunachal Pradesh. All these states currently have FMR which was implemented in 2018 as a part of India's Act East policy. The apex student body of Mizoram, Mizo Zirlaipal, MZP submitted a memorandum to Prime Minister Narendra Modi while strongly opposing the centre's decision to scrap the free movement regime and border fencing at the indo Myanmar border. The student body submitted their memorandum through the Governor Hari Babu Kambahat Pati. They also sent copies to the Vice President of India, the Union Home Minister and the Union Home Minister Secretary as well. In their letter, the Mizo Zirlai Paul expressed their deep concern and opposition to the Government of India's decision on the Free Movement Regime FMR, and border fencing along the Indo-Myanmar border, which they would divide the Zo people living in India and Myanmar. They also mentioned that the Zo people have been divided by administrative divisions since the colonial period and by international boundaries in the post-colonial era. Despite these divisions, we are not we do not feel separated due to the free movement regime instituted by the government of India. It enables us to participate in each other's funeral rites, marriage ceremonies, pay visits to patients at home, join in religious meetings and engage in local level sports tournaments. The recent decision to terminate this regime is now taking away the, these essential aspects of depriving us of our rights as human beings much like other communities around the world. They further stated that they are really shocked by the Government of India's decision as a world power and signatory to the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples 2007, which addresses the problems of Indigenous peoples, including those divided by international boundaries like Zo people. It was also stated that Article 36 of the Declaration asserts the right of Indigenous peoples divided by international borders to maintain and develop contacts, relations and cooperation across borders for spiritual, cultural, political, economic and social purposes with their own members as well as other peoples across borders. The MZP urges the Indian government to reconsider its decision. They also emphasize the need to explore alternative measures for addressing concerns such as drug trafficking and smuggling without resorting to actions that divide our indigenous communities. Leaders of the student body said that they will have a meeting regarding the issue tomorrow and that they are ready to take further action in this matter. The Bharat Joronya Yatra of Congress MP Rahul Gandhi faced a significant setback today as Ms. Greens vandalized and smeared his hoarding with paint in Morigaon district, Assam. The incident occurred as Gandhi embarked on the Yatra aiming to connect with the people but was met with unexpected disruptions. The Morigaon district administration, citing intelligence inputs, took precautionary measures to maintain peace and tranquility in the region. District Commissioner Devashis Sarma, in a letter to Congress functionaries, highlighted concerns about potential miscreants taking advantage of two major events happening simultaneously, the Bharat Joro Yatra and the Ram Lala Prant Pratishtha. On the basis of intelligence inputs, the district administration apprehends the involvement of miscreants who may try to disrupt the peace and tranquility of district by indulging in anti-social activists, stated Sarma in the letter. He further stated the need to ensure the safety and security of Rahul Gandhi, who is a Z plus protectee. In the interest of adverting any potential law and order disruption and ensuring the safety of the Congress leader, the District Commissioner requested that the party refrains from the proposed street corner meeting at the Bihotoli Police Point and Padyatra from the Srimanta Sankardeva Chowk in Morigaon Town. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, during the course of his Bharat Joronya Yatra, reached Meghalaya yesterday where he addressed a gathering at the Riboy district. Addressing the crowd, Gandhi talked of the idea behind starting the Nya Yatra from trouble toned Manipur. Here, he blames the BJP and RSS 
for the crisis that continues to engulf Manipur. The reason is that the ideology of the RSS and the BJP has destroyed the idea of Manipur. The politics of hatred and violence have torn the state apart, causing hundreds of deaths and thousands of and thousands of people to lose their property. It's a complete tragedy. That's why we wanted to send a message to the rest of India about the pain the people of Manipur are feeling, said Gandhi. The Congress leader also targeted Prime Minister Narendra Modi for not visiting Manipur even once ever since the violence broke out. It's astonishing to me that the PM of India hasn't visited Manipur yet. Is Manipur not an Indian state? Are the people of Manipur not part of India? If the PM wants to stop the violence in Manipur, he can do it in three days. The truth is, he is not interested in putting an end to the violence in Manipur, said Gandhi. Gandhi's Bharajoronya Yatra entered Meghalaya today after being denied entry to Bata Drava Than in Nagaon, Assam. Simultaneously, Rahul Gandhi and other Congress leaders did a sit-in protest over being denied entry to Bata Drava Than. A political storm erupted as Congress leader Rahul Gandhi was denied entry to the Bata Drava Shrine. The incident occurred during Gandhi's Bharajoro Yatra, a significant outreach program by the Congress party. J. Ram Ramesh outlined a sequence of events leading up to the denial. Initially, local Congress MLAs Shibomani Barao and Rana Goswami had met with the Bardowa Thand Satra Dekar temple heads on January 11th, conveying Gandhi's wish to visit the temple early on January 22nd. The Satra Dehekar had welcomed the re this request. However, Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma later announced that Gandhi could, not, could only visit after 3 p.m. on the same day, coinciding with the Pran Pratishta ceremony of Lord Ram in Ayodhya, suggesting a deliberate clash of schedules. Ramesh alleged that the Temple Management Committee was pressured by the Assam CM, who in turn was acting under instructions from Delhi. Despite earlier approval, the Satra Dekar stated on January 21st that due to expected crowds, Gandhi should postpone his visits to after 3 p.m. This sudden change of plans led to sit-in protest by Gandhi in Nagaon, where he questions the motives behind the restriction. Now it's time for a short break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello kids, 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 hello kids. Very nice, beautiful, colorful, colorful, rosy, rosy, cozy, cozy, wonderful, wonderful. Hello kids, hello kids. Shark India, build your future with us. Admission opened. Book your seat for February 2024 Winter in Tech. Study MBBS in Kazakhstan. Why study in Kazakhstan? Self country. Affordable fees with best quality education. Hostel and maze with Indian food. Recognized by NMC or MCI, World Health Organization and European Union. More than 5,000 Indian students studied. Need pass and uncleared need students can apply, condition apply. Assure admissions in top medical university of Kazakhstan. Contact 8368-133-941-98622-69004. Thawadban Karabam Lekai near NYK Club in Far West, Manipur, India. Gear up for the future with Quantum University. Write your success story with our new age programs that shall be amongst the top three most rewarding careers in India and across the globe in the next decade. One of the reasons why Quantum is a leading private university in India is these world-class partnerships which makes it stand out among the rest.
what's the pinnacle of success for your children? Get enrolled to one of the finest schools in Northeast India, UNACO School, Excellence in Education. Welcome back. Now moving on. The Assam cabinet yesterday decided that all the cabinet ministers will together visit the Ram Mandir in Ayodhya to take darshan of Ram Lala. The decision was taken yesterday during a cabinet meeting chaired by Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma, even as the Pran Pratishta ceremony of the temple took place today in Ayodhya. On this auspicious day, the Assam cabinet extends thanks to the Honorable Prime Minister on behalf of the people of Assam. Along with this, the Assam cabinet has taken a decision that all the cabinet ministers will together go to Ayodhya on February 22nd and take darshan of Ram Lala, said cabinet minister Jayanta Mala Barao. While speaking to a press today, the cabinet also gave its note for forming a new state level university in Gopur under the name of freedom fighter Swahit Kanaglata. The Assam cabinet has given its note to establish a new state university in Gopur under the name of Swahit Kanaglata. The Swahit Kanaglata University Bill will be introduced in the upcoming assembly session, said Barwa. The cabinet meeting also decided that the VGR PGR land would be deserved and de reserved and equivalent quantum of land would be reserved for VGR, PGR in Golagat district. It was also stated that the proposed VGR, PGR land is under the occupation of the indigenous landless farmers prior to January 1, 2011. Jayanta Mala Barao also announced that under the mission Basundhara 2.0, land is to be settled in favour of landless indigenous families in the districts of Sonitpur, Tinsukia, Demaji, Nagaon, Biswanath, Kam Kamrup Metro, Kamrup Rural, Bongai Gaund, Golpara and Dhubri districts. The cabinet has also approved land settlement for 418 landless indigenous families across 10 districts in both urban and rural areas. It was also formed, informed that out of the total approved offers for settlement, 84% have been given to applicants from SC, ST, OBC, MOBC categories. The cabinet also decided today that SOPDG fund normal works of rupees 400 crore to be released as second installment to Bodo Land Territorial Council (BTC) for financial year 2023-2024 under grant number 78 for all round development of the BTC. Another significant decision by the cabinet was to approve a bill to curb unfair practices during exams. The cabinet approved the Assam Public Examination Measures and Prevention of Unfair Means in Recruitment Bill 2024 in this regard. Northeast most awaited fashion show for a cause event NEIFW Northeast International Fashion Week 2024 is scheduled to take place on 27th and 28th of January 2024 in Guwahati in the premises of the South Point School campus Guwahati. NEIFW Northeast International Fashion Week has always been a big bus in the entire Northeast where all aspiring and notable fashion designers of India and abroad participate to showcase their exclusive designs for a noble cause. The opening theme of NEIFW goes for fashion for all, which means apart from designer shows, it is an amazing platform for kids, teens and ladies who are interested in the line of fashion. Interested fashion lovers will be coming from different parts of India. NEI FW is not just another fashion event but an event with always a social cause. The social theme of the event previously was for the old age home, eye and body organ donations, plant trees and protect the environment, give shelter and protect the animals along with international NGO, PETA and many more animal welfare organizations. This eighth season is there to create awareness for animal shelter, old age animals and adopt animals. Northeast International Fashion Week NEIFW this year would be more enthralling as Prasant Ghosh. 
who, was, who has revived the legacy of Northeast rich handloom crafts globally, is all prepped up to is all prepped up to spread social awareness in a new way through fashion. The fashion designer who has led to the creation of a new fashion wave across the world by defining the authenticity of Northeast crafts has come up with a team to support Prasanta Ghosh has worked in shows all over India and countries like Bangladesh, Bhutan, Malaysia, Sri Lanka and Nepal and so on. He has also awarded the best fashion choreographer of Choreographer of Northeast 2011, Lifetime Achievement Award from the Wife of the Governor 2018 and Northeast Leadership Award 2015 for his excellent service in the field of fashion, textile and craftsmanship. Upon improvement in the law and order situation in the Valley Districts, curfew has been relaxed till 10 p.m. today in Imphal East, Imphal West and Thaubal Districts. In Kakching district, curfew has been relaxed till 8 p.m. today. However, in Bishnupur district, curfew has been relaxed till 5 p.m. today. Traffic is seen as usual on the roads. Most of the shops and markets were opened. Several people purchased their essential items during the curfew relaxation. For LETV News Channel, contact to email address info at letv.in or 9402890982 and subscribe to LETV YouTube channel or follow on Facebook page, Instagram and X for more information about the channel. Before we conclude, let's take a look at the headlines once again. Gangai celebrated in the state. MHA envoy arrived in Imphal, met Arambai Tengol. And curfew relaxed in Imphal East, West and Taubal District till 10 p.m. For Kakshin District, curfew has been relaxed till 8 p.m. In Bishnupur District, curfew has been relaxed till 5 p.m. today. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day ahead.